Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the IPFS Docs meeting. This is January the 13th. I think it's a Monday. Are we on a Monday? Feels like a Monday. Uh, 2020. Um, the team is substantially smaller because Eric's not here. Eric's gone. Um, but everyone else is here, so that's cool. Um, so I guess we'll just jump straight in. Um, I'm going to request permission to share my screen. It's down here. Cool. Okay, that's through. So can you guys see? Sweet. Yep. Um, cool. So we've got like a pretty short uh, agenda right now at the moment. We're just going to be covering sort of our OKRs and essentially what we're going to be doing for the next little bit. Um, I guess we can start off with, uh, Chris, do you want to just run over the Agolia search integration for the, the Docs beta launch? I can jump straight in there. Um, preceding that, actually, if you mind clicking on that link, uh, with the wish list there. Um, I'll just summarize those few tasks that are in this list. Um, so keeping an eye on what is going on in the canny board as well with uh, most uh, expectations and what people want and also uh, things that we would like to see that didn't make the first cut of the beta. Uh, this is like a summarized list of the, the most immediate tasks that I uh, would like to get to next. Um, one of those which uh, I've started immediately is the Agolia search integration, which is going to tie up a, a couple of UX issues that we've had um, with the basic integrated search at the moment. It will also enable us to have full text integration. Uh, so you'll be able to search for all the body content and find uh, uh, other, other things in different structures. So you, it will give you summarized lists based on whether it's API documentation or whether uh, it's actual um, long form tutorials. Um, so I've requested access uh, to the API um, uh, tokens from them, and they will it, it basically go through an approval process. Uh, they will audit the site and say uh, say whether we qualify for the doc search product. Um, and I should hear back from them hopefully within the next couple of days, and should get some uh, uh, token access that I can then integrate that into the current uh, website. Um, the config is set up on my local build at the moment, so that's kind of ready waiting for, for them to give me uh, the heads up uh, so I can then test it out. Um, there will be a first stage of like once I've integrated that, I'll create a PR. Uh, we can then um, basically test the two side by side to see if there's any additional tweaks we need to make. Um, I'll have to make sure that it'll work well uh, on the mobile integration because we've got a custom uh, header element for that at the moment. Um, but otherwise, that's kind of where we're at, at the moment. Uh, I'm uh, Outside of docs, I'm obviously working on some other briefs, so it's kind of uh, as as and when things come up, um, I will be trying to do my best to, to patch them um, in the meantime. So I've, I've applied a couple of security patches recently and um, just upgraded some of the uh, base dependencies on the on the app. Um, but otherwise, it's kind of maintenance mode while we uh, just go through these few tasks. Um, and is it what was next on the list on the? Oh, back to the agenda. The agenda, yes. Uh, so that covers the Golia stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so it's pr assuming that like once the, we get like the API key from Golia, like how long do you reckon it's going to take to actually integrate that search stuff? Well, because there is already a package that uh, works with Vpress, we should be should be pretty quick. So it should be within the first uh, within one week, I would say, after we've done some testing. So uh, the main thing is just to make sure that we're actually improving the experience and it works. Uh, better than we uh, we currently have the inter existing integrated search. So um, yeah, I think we should allow a bit of time for internal testing with that and maybe invite some people who have uh, signed up on the, um, the beta spreadsheet and see what they think. Nice, nice. Um, going forward, like if we're going to be changing loads of the content and things like that, um, are we going to have to frequently update the Agolia, like if they're crawling through our site or whatever? What, what's exactly, the yeah. Process so there? So one slight disadvantage is that right now, as the site gets built as with the new content, the index is up to date immediately. Uh, the index will be uh, basically crawled every 24 hours uh, according to their current documentation. There might be an opportunity of where we can uh, kick that off quicker if there is um, uh, certain needs, like we've made like, migrated an entire section and we end up with four or fours or something. So uh, without additional access to the platform, I can't, um, exactly validate uh, what pitfalls there will be around that but the majority of the dot content wouldn't 
won't move that rapidly. So um, I think a 24 hour crawling window is, is okay for the meantime. Um, but ex exactly, we've got to test this out just to make sure. So um, we'll be aware of these things once, uh, yeah, and work with them as we as we go progress. Cool, sounds good. I'm excited. I've heard like really good things about Agolia from like other people that I've worked with in the past. So should be cool to get that in. Um, yeah, sweet. It's definitely definitely very effective, but uh, it does mean we require like uh, the the site to be online. So um, you do lose offline search ability, but to 90% of the use cases are usually connected online using IPFS and your browser. So um, we may have to integrate a, a fallback version at some point um, if we want to have retain like offline uh, search and also online search. So that's something to consider. Cool beans. Uh, cool. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, I guess we'll just jump on the next thing, uh, which is me. So docs content. Um, this week, I'm just going to be focusing on two main things. So fleshing out the doc standards a bit more. So that's things like the style guide, contribution guidelines, and contribution walkthrough. So these three things here, uh, and as well as scope, sonar, and example stuff. Um, these two things actually cropped up. There was a, a, a GitHub user um, that left an issue saying they were having difficulties contributing to one of the uh, protocol labs projects. Uh, and there wasn't like a guide of how to do it like as a, as a new user. So I've actually just been putting together like a pretty much just a standard tutorial walkthrough where it sort of teaches just a, a GitHub user how to actually make a very small contribution to a project. And then hopefully that's going to help like the community and like earlier or like first contributors to actually contribute to projects, which would be pretty cool. Um, and then there's also this. So the GoPersona and example user spec. Um, I really want to get this done this week. So this is going to be things like the it sounds really stupid and probably basic, but like the, the sample user names that we give to the users in examples. So like one thing I always bring up here is Apple uses Johnny Appleseed as like one of their main things and that's like their go-to thing. Um, so if anyone's got any cool ideas, creative uh, things, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Jessica? Um, interplanetary file system is a subtle homage to Licklider that I think was originally came from Juan. Um, I know Juan's super busy, but it might be interesting to uh, kind of go down that look lighter path and see if anything sounds clever um, and, and see what his thoughts might be. I don't want to turn yeah, it cool. into a really big deal though. So yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm definitely on board for like inside jokes or like subtle jokes and usernames. I think that'd be quite funny, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see if Juan has like 30 seconds. Yeah. free time <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i think cool. that's the sort of thing you might really dig though yeah um sweet uh, and then like another thing i'm doing apart from doc standards is setting up this community of writers and content creators also called the army of writers it's previously mentioned um this is going to be a project that's going to be spinning up for like the rest of january uh where we get more and more people from the community sort of enabling them in more ways to to add content into the docs and sort of spread the workload a little bit. Um, so that'd be cool. Reaching out to some people this week. Uh, anyone watching the call, feel free to contribute. Uh, hopefully the contribution guidelines will help you through that. Um, but yeah, uh, sweet. Oh, Jessica's added some nice notes. Sweet. Yes, this is the link to the intergalactic computer network. That, okay, might, cool. that might be an interesting sort of rabbit hole just to sort of Start there, keep clicking, see what comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sweet. Um, cool. Okay. Um, since you're talking, Jessica, do you want to talk about this social media monitoring? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I was about to just bring up, as of Friday, I mean, we had something like 15,000 impressions on that tweet. Um, so, so yeah, I will, I'll, I'll throw a link in the agenda to the central comms document, but, um, I have been keeping an eye on Twitter, Reddit, Hacker News, um, uh, forum posts, any comments on the blog post, um, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, it was also, so all of that happened on, um, uh, Wednesday when we launched launched was the initial set of um, stuff so the initial set of posts so like um, reddit sort of gotten a little bit buried so far um, but uh, Twitter just being that it's such a rapidly flowing um, 
rapidly flowing medium. And so I've actually, um, I did a tweet on Wednesday, did a tweet on Friday, I'm gonna do another one today. Um, and that's been cool because we've been able to focus on the three calls to action, like, hey, look at the docs, B, contribute to the docs, um, C, vote on, on new features. Um, so I'll keep on that. Um, the, I, I will also link to a quick deck that we are gonna use in an internal PL meeting um, about a week from now where I um, just put in some basic stats on the sort of social media feedback. Um, so I'll link to those in the agenda real quick. But everything is great. Everything seems really, really positive so far. Um, it's also attracted a massive amount of attention to the bounty issues, which is pretty sweet. Um, looking forward to seeing how this round of sort of bounty fulfillment goes and um, whether we want to use that as like a test case to like put more bounties on more things to get more stuff done more quickly. So that's it. Sweet, sounds good. That's exciting. And yeah, like the bounties have been getting like way more attention than I thought they would in like the first little bit. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, lots and lots of GitHub notifications going off all the time, which is always fun. Yep. Um, yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, I guess next on, uh, we can jump to Proto School with you, Terry. How's it going now? Great. So last week we had the uh, very exciting situation of having three people on the Proto School team in a single week. It's great. Uh, we got a lot done. Uh, so just on the content front, which is kind of most relevant to docs, I just want to call out that the next content that we're planning, which comes from that review of IPFS camp content that we did, would be the anatomy of a CID, which comes from Alan's, um, Alan's core course. And the other would be the life cycle of data. So like the pinning, deleting, how all of the sharing works, um, which comes from Ollie's course. So that's what's next in content land. But a lot of the features that we've shipped lately have been more sort of UX and under the hood stuff. So before he left us on Friday, very sad, um, Jill shipped a PR that was originated by Alex Posides, um, which changes the way that we handle errors and makes it much easier to diagnose problems. And one of the things it does is makes it possible to open a report, if you hit a kind of a default error that's like, oh dear, something is just wrong with the validation code, it will magically submit the code that you've submitted that caused that error to come up so that we can figure out what's wrong with the validation code for that particular exercise. Um, and then Jose, in his first week on the job, added a feature so that when you complete a tutorial, you get a nice congratulatory message and can click through to uh, send a tweet sharing your progress and linking back to the tutorial so other folks can try it. So we're psyched about those things. Then I added a link here to the Q1 OKR draft, which we can look at or not, depending on what you feel like. But um, that's kind of it at the moment on the front. And then we'll also be looking at the results of our local leadership survey and working on some tweaks to the event leadership model, hopefully in Q1. That's cool. I like the thing about the tweet. Is there any way like uh, in the tweet to kind of see how many people are posting about it? Like, is there a unique um, like hashtag or something like that? So we're not do, we're including the URL in it. We are taking a hashtag from the project that the tutorial is associated with. So if it has a little IPFS logo next to it, um, it's because somewhere in the database it says this tutorial is about IPFS. So it's at an IPFS hashtag or in the future, a P2P hashtag or whatever it is. Um, could we, we oh, sorry. I think the titles of our tutorials are too long to make sense to make hashtags that are about them, but it has the name in it. So I could probably find some way to search the records, but we don't have enough, uh, traffic right now that that's anything that would be challenging to do by hand. Yeah. Cause you could cool. throw, you yeah. could throw some sort of statistically improbable phrase in that template tweet text that you could search on later which would be the effect, effect of, I mean, that's the same as a hashtag though. Well, just the, I completed whatever at proto school in itself. Yeah, I completed proto -school. Statistically <laughs> improbable for a random person to yeah, exactly. exactly the exactly. same words that we did, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool, sounds good. All right, sweet. Um, I have one other question. On? Yeah, go ahead. Um, contributor PRs on the V2 repo, we had a couple of, PRs submitted from contributors over the weekend. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. You know, like little type of fixes and stuff. Um, but they don't kick off CI. So I can't 
merge them unless I do it from the command line, unless I'm missing something. <laughs> we could take this discussion offline, but like Chris, do we, can I chat about this? Because I think um, either, either I'm missing something or just something about how we have the CI set off is we can't do any of the pre-flight testing from contributors. Um trying to see which ones they were. Uh, yeah. I saw a summit on the original docs one, but I didn't see. No, there's uh there's one <clears> from <throat> here, let me I'll uh copy it and put it in the actually Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can probably and actually we can probably take this off the recording the recorded part. Don't mean to dive into details that don't need to be captured for posterity, but um Yeah. Shall I kill the shall I uh, kill off the recording for now? Yeah, sure. Bye. Right. Goodbye, Internet. See you next week.